We we ask. I ask the city manager to ask each commissioner to choose two. We did not tell them which two to choose, and that's where we are at this point. We've interviewed them. We've ever allowed everybody to interview. Yes, sir. Excuse Mr. Me. Bonners. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I want to uh, bring up an email that we received from Mr. DePeter. Yes, sir. Concerning tonight's process, and before we go any farther, I'd like to address that. All right. Address it. Um, he questions, he certainly questions the picking of a city attorney using the process that you just mentioned, where an email was sent to commissioners to pick two names. That process is, as he says, I believe he's correct, out of the sunshine. Um, it, it needs to be cured. It needs to go back to the beginning and it needs to start over. Um, I believe the process was started about a week ago where where um, we received received there was an ad placed and then there was seven applications received. Um, Donna Smith on January 20th sent an email to all the commissioners, the mayor and Je Jerry and Jenny, city manager, city clerk, saying, please see the proposals for legal service. Um, and then at some point, we were asked to rank two. The process, I think, was something that was set up from, a, this is my opinion, this is my opinion. So we have a chance to cure that. We have a chance to go back, start over, take the full list of seven attorneys that came in and start the process over. I think that's what we have to do. We have to start the process over in the open, in the sunshine, and then pick from that list of seven, our final two, final three, start the process over. Um, if we get to two tonight and it's the same two, then we could possibly go forward and pick from those two. If another name gets added in, we have to do a redo. Um, I want to just add something to that. Um, I think this process was done similar to the process that was done for the city manager. On November 28th, before Jen, uh, Jerry was, was um, city manager, Jenny Parham sent an email out to uh, us from Mr. Sharon, who had a document that had, I can't remember, I think it's 30 some people on it. And it, he reduced it to us to pick from, uh, out of the sunshine. It was a list of 31, I think, city managers that was out of the sunshine he picked. And we then did use those names to pick them in, a, in an open meeting to whittle it down. But I think that was similar to the process that we tried to duplicate on this process. So I, I, if I explain myself, I think our city manager was using that as an example and went forward using a similar process trying to whittle it down. Um, having said that, I think we don't need to go back to that, but I think what we have to do to stay in the sunshine, to cure the problem, is start over. And so, before you go farther, any farther mentioning two names or doing anything, mm -hmm. I, I think you have to do what it says on this on this commission meeting schedule, review and rank city attorney candidates. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, it was never anybody's intention to be outside of the Sun Channel. Oh, we understand that pretty clearly. And I follow the pattern that's been laid earlier. But the law does say that you have to that you have to remain 
true to what you're called to do, and you have to shun, shun the appearance of impropriety. With that in mind, we're going to take a, a, a list of seven. And does everybody have a copy of this list? Mr. Mayor, excuse yes. me, but can I, sit, can I speak for just a second? Sure. I'd like to say that for the city manager selection, that was voted on by the commission. They did authorize... They knew beforehand that Mr. Sharon would pick the right. top candidate, so that was voted on as a whole by the right. commission. Um, okay. What we're trying to do is go back and start over to clear any misunderstanding about Sunshine Law. Uh, we had a bid opening. There were seven people on the bid opening. Most bid openings, you pick the cheapest one, the least expensive one normally, just common sense. Donna Smith was there, Jenny Farmer there, and five other people. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow anybody that would like. We did not, in our communicating with the commissioners, we did not tell them which two to pick. We just said pick two. And everybody just happened to pick the same two because that was the least money in the bid, which is what we were allowed. But we will give anybody an opportunity to like to, as soon as we get those copies, so everybody has it to nominate any of those people on that. And that way we will review those seven people and rank the city attorney candidates. The thing about this controversial, several controversial issues is that nobody in High Springs really all want the same thing, we're just different people. And, uh, Never been any on anybody's part. I don't think to do anything but wrong. Okay, we're going to open the floor for nominations uh, for city attorney. Uh, I don't see any other way to do it other than to do that. Uh, we have seven applications, and we're going to ask you to nominate somebody out of these seven applications. For city attorney, Mr. Bay. You want one? How many nominations do you want? Just one well, let's start one. I think probably let's do uh, one at a time. And then the one the two that gets the most votes will. Okay. Uh, I'd like to nominate um, Mr. Raymond Ivey with Sprogs and Carmichael. Mr. Raymond Ivey is okay. Uh, is there a second to that nomination? I'll, nom I'll second that nomination. Any discussion? All in favor of Mr. Ivy, please raise your hand. Say aye. Let's just do a voice vote. Say aye. Okay. How do you want to do it? As the top two, or you're appointing someone as the top two? Yeah. It says review and rank the city attorney candidates and then consider authorizing a contract with the number one ranked candidate. So we're going to have to get them all on the list and then vote on them? Why don't you just, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Why don't you just ask each commissioner what their, who their top two ranking candidates are? Thank you. That, is that agreeable with everyone? Okay. Ms. Gaston, who are your top? Wait just a minute. Let's withdraw that motion we got on the board. How about that? Is that okay with y'all? We just withdraw that? I don't think I made a motion. No, it's a nomination. Nomination. Okay. okay. Right. We'll start over and do it. I like that idea. Ms. Gaston, who is your top two? Selections. Um, Brent Barris and um, I guess I would say uh, Mr. Ivy. Okay, Miss Waller. Uh, Scruggs and Carmichael and Samuel Much. Okay. Yep, what was the second one? Samuel Munch. Munch? Yeah, first number one. Right. Mr. Bay? Well, the attorneys or the firms? It doesn't matter whichever. Uh, Mr. Raymond Ivey, as far as I'm Carmichael, and uh, Mr. Scott Walker from Fulton Walker. Okay. Mr. Barnes? Barris and Raymond Ivey. Mr. 
am I, my two choices would be Brent Barris and Raymond Ivey. Mr. Yes, ma'am. One, two, three, four, five for Raymond Ivey, three for Mr. Barris, one for Foles and Walker, and one for Sam Much. Say that again. Five. Five for? Raymond Ivey, three for Brent Barris, one for Foles and Walker, and one for Sam Much. Your two okay. top candidates would be. So that gives us what? Raymond Ivey and Brent Barris as your two top candidates. Okay. So we have accomplished item one on the business items of reviewing and ranking the candidates. Anybody have anything you'd like to say? Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barnes, you got your hand up or you just wait? Well, we ranked the candidates for the
quite unique to the city. Um, I'm in a quandary about this. I think Brent Barris has some unique qualities to bring him in line with doing municipal work now. And he's a city attorney now, his other city, and he's local. Yet I question the budget numbers, that how that will work in our budget. But in my discussions with him, I'm comfortable with his numbers. I know Ray Ivey from, from being an attorney in the city of Gainesville. Uh, I know Scruggs and Carmichael. I would have appointed a special magistrate for the court through, through an att another attorney of Scruggs and Carmichael. Um, extremely valuable firm. So um, while this motion's on the floor, I, I could support it in maybe another way. I could not support it. I could support it where we look at engineers or if there's a possibility of, well, I'll let that motion stay on the floor, but I think there could be a compromise. And um, I, I would probably not vote, I will not vote for this motion that's on the floor, and I might not vote for another motion, but I might make my own motion to see that we use Mr. Brent Barris as our primary city attorney, and in the charter it allows for him to delegate a second attorney to sit in if he's not available. Because Brent Barris also works for some, works for some other attorney, uh, other cities, or he might be in something for them. And I would like Mr. Ivy to be our backup and our primary heavy hitter with Jones Edmonds if that comes to be and the 1.6 million doesn't get ruled on in our favor. I know it's a little difficult, but um, I kind of, kind of think that's where I'm at right now. I would uh, love to have Mr. Barris as our sitting in meetings attorney and when he's not available, his designated attorney is Mr. Ivey. Um, you know, just to explain, um, I think both gentlemen are, you know, well, well qualified. I think they both make uh, exemplary attorneys. Um, and to both of you, whichever you end up being our city attorney, I'd be happy to work with either of you. Um, you know, one of the things that's really struck me by Mr. Uh, Mr. Ivey's proposal um, is there was not a retainer. Um, and Ms. Gester, who made the, the resolution and the motion to terminate Mr. DePeter, uh, in that resolution, we stated that it was for monetary purposes, or was one of the reasons. Um, and that reason is among others. Um, but when I look at um, Mr. Ivey's proposal, he is proposing no retainer, uh, $50 an hour, which is a steal, I might say, uh, to get anybody from Scruggs and Carmichael uh, to work for that. He's indicated he's in it for the long haul. Um, the schedule will be him. Uh, we're looking at an average. I took the uh, last 12 months of, of attorney's uh, numbers. We're looking at an average of about 56 hours per month is what was billed. Um, so if we're doing that uh, $50 an hour, we're looking at about $2,800 on average a month. It's a savings of $1,200 a month um, over what we have been paying Mr. DePeter. Whereas with Mr. Barris, um, he has offered a $3,000 a month retainer for 30 hours. Um, so we know on average we're going to go 26 hours above that. Um, and he's offering $100 per hour above that. So obviously another uh, $2,600, which then pushes his proposal up to $5,600. Um, so, looking at the money side of it, uh, Mr. Ivey's proposal makes the most sense. Um, and I do appreciate that they're both very well qualified. Um, uh, looking at realistically what our city needs and the hours that's required of an attorney, uh, financially it makes the most sense, uh, experience-wise it makes the most sense, and uh, I think Mr. Ivey would do a, uh, a great job. So, sorry. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'd like to say, uh, even though in meeting Mr. Ivey, I think he's a very qualified attorney, but uh, with Mr. Barris, his background is with the city and uh, taking care of the municipalities. Also, when I said budgetary concerns, I wasn't just speaking to uh, what someone was costing us on a month's month wage. I was also considering the expenses that we've incurred in lawsuits 
Also, um, allowing our insurance rates to continue to go up, uh, lack of whatever we needed to stop wrongful discharge, uh, pension plans that seem to benefit and package, you know, um, package uh, benefits that seem to benefit the employees, severance packages of thousands of dollars, and I mean, it goes on and on. It's not just what per month the billing is. Uh, I actually, I think less is more. And again, uh, one of the things that I like about Mr. Barris is the fact that he's local, he's invested in the city. He's uh, been a part of the chamber, served on the economic board, uh, as well as our code enforcement board. And we've not had any problem there. Um, and even though uh, we're talking about three, actually, I think one of the things that is important to me as I look at all the documents that govern our city it uh, requires almost full-time attorney to handle what we have and I believe we can do better than that I, it should not have to be that way so it needs to be revamped um, I mean so it's not just what we get per hour it's what has it cost us and we're voting on and replacing a city attorney slash charter officer. So I don't know that you can actually um, do it in such a way that he's required to delegate certain things out to a certain person. I think it would be up to whoever's in charge. I mean, th this is a charter officer that we're dealing with in the, in the um, charter as it is right now. Ms. Weller. Yes. Um, I, you know, interviewed both gentlemen. Um, I've looked at their qualifications, and again, either one of them I think would do a great job. Um, all things considered, um, the um, I did some figures. My figures indicated that at least for the for 12 months of uh, time that our former city attorney did, it averaged out to 62 hours. And when I took that and looked at um, the, um, the rates, uh, at least at this point, with Mr. Barris, you know, we'd be in the paying $6,200 uh, as opposed to the, um, the $50 an hour, uh, which would be uh, well within the, the amount of money uh, that Mr. Ivey's uh, firm is proposing. So, um, at this point, I think all things being equal, um, and having interviewed both of them, I would have to go um, Scruggs and Karma. I, uh, I read Mr. Ivey's, it's a win-win situation, as everybody said, we couldn't lose with either one of these gentlemen, or both eminently qualified. But I read this, maybe I read it wrong, uh, I propose building the city at the rate of $50 an hour. For what I understand, the city requires approximately 80 hours. Well, that would be uh, $4,000. And I base my decision on Mr. Barris was $3,000. And uh, I've talked to both of them in the interviews. And uh, I'd like to say they're both eminently qualified, but they. Uh, I kind of started this trying to find some of the money that we need in the budget to make the budget. And uh, it looks to me like Mr. Barris is, uh, is at $3,000, and I believe it will be less than that mm -hmm. because there's a lot of fluff in our, the way we do things. And I'm not blaming our former city attorney. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm just saying the way the system was set up, we, we wasted a lot of time when we didn't have to. Uh, and, and I've discussed that with Mr. Barris about how you fix that. And for instance, just a small thing, and that is instead of attending every little meeting and just sitting there and not doing, just listening, he, what he does in the other little towns is he takes the minutes and if there's a problem, he advises them. So far there hasn't been anything like we had this evening with, with uh, a con conflict with the sunshine and I'll perceive, I'm not sure that it was, but it, rather than take that chance. And uh, it's not in his contract that I admit that in his proposal, but uh, I've seen how he did other little towns where there was a, a 
uh, who went over the base rate where he forgave them that, and I think probably either either the firm would do that. So I favor Mr. Barris. He's got an office in High Springs. He's already our code enforcement officer. We know how he performs, uh, and I just uh, for that for no other reason Mr. except my personal opinion. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to make sure that we have it clear. Um, as far as if you're looking at rates, um, in fact, if I'm speaking to um, Mr. Ivy on the $50 an hour, if you're comparing apples to apples, um, the 30 hours for $3,000 um, that Mr. Barris is proposing with Mr. Ivy, uh, the you're, you're looking at um, I had 40 hours of trip would be $1,500, and for, for, so that's obviously a lot cheaper. So it's not a ma he's not he's not looking for a minimum amount that he's going to get paid every month. Okay. Mr. Yes. Um, Mr. Arnie's background is not in the city, and I'm sure he would be also, uh, in fact, spoke off other people in uh, the law firm that he would refer different things to. And I'm sure they won't be charging $50 an hour. Um, this is one of the things I had a problem with is the way we put it out to bid. Um, I believe we can do better. I think we can do less. We don't need all the hours that have been bid on. I think our government's too big. That's one of the problems. We can't afford it. And um, I think we can do a, a less is more, is, is the saying. And, um, this is what we have, and we need to reduce it because we can't afford it. And I think that's important. Mr. Mayor, um, I just want to say I, I do share some of the same concerns that looking at um, you know the, the question: Do we need a full-time city attorney? Do we not? You know, uh, can can the attorney listen to the recordings versus come to the meeting? Um, you know, either way, either way, is listening to the meeting at home. Uh, after the fact, or sitting in the meeting here listening to it, uh, you're still getting billed that per hour rate. Um, I just want to make sure we're 100% we're clear here. There's no retainer, there's no $4,000 number that's in the proposal. We're looking at $50 post bill uh, per hour. That's half of what Mr. Frank Barris is proposing. And, and this gentleman is not from a um, uh, small law firm, it's somebody who is very well qualified, and nowhere in the contract is there. There are other rates that we're talking about referring to partners. We're talking about fifty dollars an hour for his time. That's a steal. It's an absolute steal for this. Is it not? I'm sorry. It's not a steal. Ms. Gestry. No, I'm I heard you say uh oh. Sorry. I thought you were responding. I'll give my mic some more. The thing that I want to make sure we understand here is, is we have a very qualified attorney looking to do the work here. I, I understand that can we can we pare our legal hours down. Um, I've looked over Mr. Peters' bills, and, and he's very detailed. Uh, we get him every month, and you see telephone call with uh, chief of police about a union issue, or, or Ms. Langman about a Sunshine issue, or Jerry, you know, Jenny about this. There's a lot of things, a lot of <coughs> law, and Sunshine law that we have to comply with. Um, that 56 hours per month, I, I don't see how you could cut that down. Let's say you cut it down 10 hours a month, down 46. Under the terms of Mr. Barris's proposal, you're still going to pay $4,600, which is $600 more than what we're paying Tom to Peter. On average, we're going to save $1,200 a month based on the statistics. If we go with Mr. Ivan, he's very well qualified. He comes highly recommended from people in the Gainesville Chamber, from Gainesville businesses. Uh, I think he'll do this, a fantastic job. And this is one of the things I really like about him, since he's been on that side of the transaction of the businessman. He's represented the business people, the developers, and so forth, so he understands business. So when it comes time to draft ordinances and things that give me that business friendly uh, appearance, he'll be able to do that. So. Yes, ma'am. I'm only mentioning this in the fact that I would like to tell all of the commissioners that I have a $85,000 shortfall that I have to fix by the 30th of this month. So I would like all of you to take that into consideration that uh, apples to apples, bargain to bargain, I have some things that I have to fix. Thank you. 
The only way we're ever going to find out how many hours the new attorney can do is by doing it. Because we just, anything else would be just conjecture and guesswork. Uh, Mr. Peter has been with us five years. He was a mayor for two and a half years before that. He understands high springs. But we had a kind of a unique contract with our city attorney at that time, as we did with the city manager and several other people that have been brought up. And we're trying to correct that so that we don't get any further into trouble than we already are. And this trouble is not created by this commission. This trip, we inherited the troubles. And we've been trying to correct it ever since we got here. We get criticized for things we didn't do. And that's okay. That goes with the territory. But having said that, I would like to see, based on my conversation with both gentlemen, I still favor Mr. Barrys. And that's not anything personal. It's just that I, I feel like it'll prove out to be the right thing to do. But if it's not, we'll y'all will make another change. That's my opinion. Anything else anybody want to say? Mr. Mr. Barnes? There's got to be a vote here coming up. And I want you to all think about the vote that you're about to make. That we've had an issue with public records law. And that I think by going forward with a vote, you're all agreeing we may have cured the problem in the beginning to get to this point. Um, I think our vote, a, a vote in any direction, yes or no, is an indication by any commissioner beyond a motion that, 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 that we're agreeing with we've, we've cured the problem. Um, I will vote and we'll see where this goes. But I'm also concerned that we haven't decided on, we haven't, I, I've discussed with about severance. I haven't discussed necessarily about how long a contract would go. I don't think that was in their paperwork. So that's something that has to be determined. I know how that, I know what I think I'd like to see for a contract. Um, so I'm also thinking, and I know this is a little out of the box, that we've picked two, and we should maybe discuss that over the next two days and then have it on a Thursday meeting to pick the final one, to get ironed out what the length of the contract's gonna be. If we pick one right now, what if we don't like the length of the contract? What if we find out that there's severance? What if we find out that the price that was, we were told it was higher? Um, I don't know. So I'm just throwing that out there. So we've certainly stumbled a lot here with, with some the way things have been going up here. Thank you, sir. And I agree. It's better to delay than to make an error. We've made a lot of errors in our city over the years, and nobody, as I said, it wasn't anybody trying to do anything wrong. We just made some misjudgments. And I'm glad you all are willing to discuss it because it really needs to be thoroughly discussed. Ms. Water? Um, Mr. Mayor, I would, it, we could have a proba probationary period that would take care of what you're asking for. And that's what I think we're going to discuss I mean, in the next meeting. We are going. Yeah. Uh, we have it on the agenda to uh, the first item to review and authorize the mayor to execute a memo of understanding for of city attorney services. So we, we don't have to talk about that. And so you need to be thinking about that as well. Yes, um, I was going to say in my discussions with the gentleman, I you know I specifically asked him there would be there is no severance pay issue, um, okay. which I would not you know I would expect him to to know that, and they they indicate that to me. And obviously, we may have to sit down and and re-verify that with the gentleman. Um, and the you know whatever the contract is, it's basically going to be what we said as far as just covering their scope of duties, period, and right. listing what their hourly rate is or depending on who you, who you go with, whether it's the 30 hours for 3,000 or it's the $50 an hour. Um, so I don't really see that as, as, an, as an issue, um, but certainly if, if you want to um, delay it until the, the next meeting and let uh, the city manager uh, clarify that with, with both of them to, so that the commission feels comfortable with that, then I would be okay with that. 
Mr. Bay. Well, one, one of the aspects of this, I'm not sure if I want to broach the subject, but I think I will. Um, you know, we're looking at two very qualified individuals, uh, one from uh, a single attorney firm, one from a larger firm. Um, so both are qualified, both understand law, both uh, can get the job done, I think, great. And I, I really do mean that, gentlemen. Whoever gets it, I'm, I'm happy to be there. Um, one is half the price of the other. I look at the money side of this, it's half the side. And so when we, we're we having trouble just funding our poor services right now, what, what image does that send to the community when we pick the double price attorney? And, and the subject that I wouldn't want to broach on, but I think I will. Um, Mr. Barris or members of his family have donated to campaigns, and he's also been politically active for members of the commission. Now, in a time when political turmoil is, is running rampant, we have someone in the room who's apolitical, comes from Gainesville. He doesn't care. He doesn't know any of us from Adam. He's not going to vote for any of us. He doesn't care. We've got five people who agree, even our top two, we're agreed with his name will make a good attorney. Wouldn't that help our healing process to get an apolitical counselor in here? we can all agree and that's not politically connected with anybody, I think that would really do uh, our citizens quite a bit of justice. It would help calm things down. We don't want to add something else, as you said, Mr. Mayor, that gives the appearance of evil. We want to avoid that completely. And so I'd like to see us go that direction. Okay, I didn't say evil, I said April Prime, too. Ms. I feel like one of the problems we had in the past is we had a city manager who brought in his people. And didn't I hear Mr. Barnes say that you played golf with Mr. Ivy, or what was that? Well, I, Mr. Mayor, I know I know Ray Ivy. Okay. For from maybe I misunderstood. Other you. thing. But I also I also know, I also know that Mr. Ivy has been worked on with the Langmans. So I mean, in business, am I wrong? That's good. Jerry, they'll have your resignation in the morning. Okay? This is going far enough. Inappropriate, Linda. Jerry will totally resign in the morning. Totally Jerry will order. resign in the morning. Call to order. Right now. Call the meeting to order. Call the meeting to order. Totally inappropriate. No. Jerry, you're not do this. No, there's no opening. Dean, Dean, call me forward. No. Okay. Dean. Those are my feelings. No. This is wrong. Okay, back to the, Let's do the, vote and go. the issue. The motion on the floor is to be nominated Ray Ivey, and we have a second. And that's the motion. We're discussing that. And uh, is there any further discussion on that? I think it's been yes. abundantly clear that. There is no body that feels anybody's doing anything wrong. It's just we, we, we've never been faced with this particular situation. And there's a lot of unanswered questions in this. For instance, the $50 an hour, it, it, I thought it had a base in there of $4,000. But it doesn't. So, And we need clarification on that. Uh, and I would like to see us uh, talk about that at this first part of the next meeting. We need an attorney because of we got such a we got eight items on the agenda I think uh, on one part and five we've got 13 agenda items in the next meeting I, I, can I go ahead. just two things um, I'd be happy to have Mr. Ivy come up and say what he said to me that there's not a retainer there's not that minimum dollar amount but the main thing is we've got a meeting Thursday where we need a legal counsel I don't think we can wait till Thursday to appoint somebody uh, we need to get the MOU done tonight and I, I feel very confident we've got somebody <coughs> Um, motion on the floor, half price attorney, it just makes sense to do this. You can, of course, hire either one of these gentlemen for next Thursday night just for that meeting if you can. And I, I, that's Brother Brawler talked about in the meeting with him, so that's a possibility you also. The there, there, there's another possibility. If we're rushing, then appoint an in interim and you know, uh, there's a lot of options. But I think we're doing um, Ms. Langman a disservice by not having an attorney. She's in a week. I was going to say, there's no, there's no contract, there's no severance. It's a memor memorandum of understanding that can be terminated at any time. If you sign tonight with Mr. Ivey, if 
in a week. We say, you know what, your first meeting, we didn't like you, you're out of here. You cut it, no money, no harm, no foul, it goes to the next rank to Mr. Barris. There's no contract term on this MOU. It's basically standing from what I understand. It's, it's a win-win. Would it be, we don't have a city attorney to ask this. So if we were to vote on either way, who decides on, on who decides on what, who, what the period of time is? You, you've made a motion now for one pick to be the city we attorney. Could, we could do it in the second step when we sign that MOU. Do we have a drafted? Mm -hmm. We don't have an attorney to draft. No, right. no I, have to, draft I have to hire one. one. Basically, what we would do is, is, is on step two, authorize that MOU be drafted, and then the very first item on, on Monday, or excuse me, Thursday, it would go into effect and we'll become our attorney. Mm -hmm. Where's the comment? Yes. I spoke to the Attorney General today, the, uh, the, the Attorney General's office about this issue. I spoke to the Commission on Ethics about this issue. I've taken a donation from Mr. Barris's father, which is not a violation. Um, I've done business with Scruggs and Carmichael as a salesman for somebody who was a seller who had a title service done. The, the Commission on Ethics said it doesn't involve me. It was with him and the seller. So I'm really uh, so I've got it on both sides. If, if somebody wants to say that I've been associated with Mr. Ivy, and then I knew Mr. Barish. Um, I know both of them. So, uh, and so I asked the Commission on Ethics and the Attorney General if I had to step aside from this. They said absolutely not. No, no, no. We're not making money on that. No. Okay, we have a motion on the floor, a nomination for Mr. Ivy. I would like to ask this question. If we were to delay this for, for the next meeting, would either of the gentlemen mind clearing up exactly? There's there's vague in in, in uh, approximately in the negotiated funds and stuff. Can we make that exact so we know what we're doing? I think everything's clear in the proposals. You do? Yes. Sure. I know. Very clear. What, what, I can answer any question if you want to ask. No, well, I don't want you to. I want the man that's yeah. going to be doing it to. I, I mean, that's your opinion. Them, but, uh, and I don't doubt either one. They're honorable people. I don't think either one of them would do anything to hurt the city or hurt us. But uh, I, I'm, I came into it thinking I was clear because of the uh, 80 hours was a, was a base salary. Uh, and that made that firm thousand dollars higher than this firm but as you have pointed out that's not what it says it says up to 80 hours so what what's can we I would you like to yes, ask um i want clarification from mr mayor what uh vice mayor was saying that a donation was that i couldn't hear what you said i received a 50 dollar donation from mr barris's father for the election and what was the response from <coughs> from this, the, both the Attorney General's office and the Office on Ethics. Mm -hmm. I've got their names at home. Both said no problem. Okay, thank you. Um, no problem. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, if, if you've got a question, I, the, the two gentlemen are here. Bring them up and ask them to clarify so we can clear this up tonight. I had that thought. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. Uh, is anybody uncomfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Question. You called the question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The question has been called for. All in favor of Mr. Ivy for city attorney? Is that what your motion was? Yes, sir. Thank you have number one. Number one position would make him the city attorney. All in favor, say aye. 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 One, two, three. All opposed, no. Yeah. No. Motion carries three to two. So now what you got to do is at the next meeting we've got to review and authorize the mayor 
to execute a memo of understanding for city attorney services. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll move to direct uh, this line to draft that uh, MOU with uh, Mr. Ivey and then amend the agenda for the number one item to be to execute that MOU the next week. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion to state a second. We authorize the city manager to create a memo of understanding and, to, and, and we execute it at the next meeting. My question is open for discussion. Any discussion? My question is, who is going to decide what's going to be in the memo of understanding? Between the two. I think it's like that's three to draft what we're looking for. I know what you're asking for. I'll look at our other memos of understanding. And if necessary, I will um, uh, have for an hour to review the contract and bring it back up. I'll find an attorney for that. There's one thing that's crucial that I want to be in there, and if I need necessary, I'll make an amendment, and that is we need to be sure that we understand there are no benefits. They will both agree to that we talk about. It. But it's better to have it in writing their attorneys, and they know that what you said don't matter. It's what's written down that matters when you get to court. And that there will be a six months probationary period. It's, it's, it's not even required. It's, 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 it's a, uh, they're at will. Yeah, you can fire it. Is there no probation? Because there's no. There's no you don't want that there. statement in there. Okay. You're not, no, you no. can terminate it tomorrow if you yeah. want to. You can terminate it any day of the week. There's no guarantee of continued employment. And no need for probation. There's no severance. No severance. No severance and no benefit. No workman's comp, which we're paying now. $50 an hour. And thank you, sir. Uh, we are in will state since you're going to be our attorney maybe you'd like to answer that question is that, would that be would you advise me to do that as mayor don't worry about putting that in there the statement that you are hired at will and we could fire you at a moment's notice you should put it in there yeah, yeah okay. it would be in the MOU that's it has, yeah. I have my notes you got all your everything yeah. yes sir okay. I will refer to our previous contracts and my contract Okay, then that concludes this meeting. Yeah, we do. No, I made a motion. Three to two, if you want. Oh, no, you did not. I'm sorry. Oh, that's what we Okay. I heard it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All in favor of authorizing. I think I'm still not understanding. Go ahead. I have the motion, Commissioner May, moved to direct the city manager to, to obtain a memo of understanding for Mr. Ivey to be presented at the next meeting. And then we're seconded. Right. The agenda for us to execute. Yes. Mr. Yes. Weller seconded. Everybody understand the motion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion to adjourn.